Hi everyone and welcome back to my back to school series. Today I'm going to give you some basic tips on how to study for language and literature courses, physics and chemistry. I already have a video up about how to study for math so go check that out if you're interested. I thought about making separate videos for each of these topics but I realized I don't have an awful lot to say about how to study specifically for that subject uh, as most of it is pretty general so I decided to just mush it all together. If you're only interested in hearing about some of the subjects and not all of them, I'll have the timeline of the video in the description box so you can just skip directly to the subject you're interested in. So let's get right into it and start out with language or literature courses. My first tip would be to actually do your readings because it's very easy to do even if it's a lot of reading, just try to go through as much as possible before you get to class because otherwise you will be sort of lost in the discussion and half of the purpose of being in that class disappears. My next thing would be to actually annotate your book very detailed. Now I hate writing in books but it's sort of something you just have to get over with uh, and I prefer using a pencil because of the purpose I feel like I'm ruining the book less if I'm using a pencil than with a pen or highlighters. So um, this is an example of how I would uh, annotate my book. So basically anything important going on in the page, any good sentences, if there was any descriptions of someone, if there were anything they said that was repeated, if there was anything I thought might come up as a symbol, anything like that I would underline. Let's see. Like this. It's in a region so if you can't understand I'm sorry. Um, at the sides for each, sometimes if there was a long paragraph that was around something very specific, I would write on the side what it was about. And then at the top of every page, I would write a very brief summary of what the page was about. By doing this, you save a lot of time. Instead of having to read through every page to find something, you can just read on the top, and there you have a summary. That's also great for revision time, so you don't have to read through the entire book. If you're completely lost and don't remember anything, you can just read through um, what you've written on the top and you will sort of get an idea of the chronolo chronology. Is that the word? I don't think that's a real word in English. Um, <laughs> you will sort of get a good overview of the timeline of the book and all the events in it. When you go to class, well, very often you will discuss the book or the readings you've done so far or for that lesson. So what I would suggest is taking very good notes. That would be if anyone participates in the debate, if you say anything, if the teacher sort of point at something or hints that something might be important, make sure to write it down. Uh, names, who people are, everything like that, write it down in your notes. Also all sort of like historical references, everything like that that you didn't know that brings out a lot of meaning in the novel or poem or whatever that other students or teacher, your teacher contributes with, write that down. Make sure that you link what you're reading now to other novels or poems that you've read previously in class. Uh, in the IV especially, that's what your exam will be about. You will have to compare and contrast uh, two or three different novels. And if you do that in your notes or as you read, that will be very beneficial for you. My final tip for literature classes is to learn terminology and use it. So my, I know my vocabulary isn't very great uh, for terminology in literature in English, but in Norwegian I know quite a lot because our teacher was very on that. We have, uh, we even had like a specific book with just terminology that was very helpful. Make sure you learn the proper definitions and you can sort of drop it out throughout your essays or your exam paper. Let's move on to physics. One is to do more exercises than reading. So by doing more exercises than readings, I mean that of course you need to read the chapter and the book, but instead of going over it and reading again and again and again to try to understand, do more exercises. Look at the problems, look at the sort of the solved examples and stuff, so you can be able to understand how to apply what you read about. On tests or exams in physics, you're often doing a lot more exercises than sort of definitions and stuff. Of course, make sure you learn the definitions properly and know what's going on, but it's more important that you understand the math. Maybe it's not more important, but it's more important that you can use the math. Another thing for physics is that, that you should try to learn by doing or seeing someone else do something. And um, this is, I'm not talking about big sort of experiments or labs, but just 
sort of think about how things apply in a real life situation. Like if you put a hot item next to a cold item, what will happen? Will both become hot? Will both become cool? And sort of try to understand because physics is very practical. Even though it may not seem like it when you're in class, it's very much it's linked to everyday situations. If you drop a pen, what happens? Now explain that with these following terms or equation. So I spent a lot of time thinking that physics was way above me, that I, you know, I, I couldn't grasp it, but it's just sort of bringing it down to earth. <laughs> That's gravity for you guys. <laughs> oh, it's such a joke. But sort of bringing it down to earth and sort of trying to apply it in real life situations will make you much more able to understand and do it correctly. It's also a lot easier if you think about it in that way, in that sense. So make sure you learn the very broad and basic skills so you're able to make reality checks with your answers. Learn formulas, how to manipulate them and how you can use them or what you can use them for. In the IV you have a data booklet but even so you will need to understand what the different letters stand for, what the constants are, uh, when you can use them where, like when you can use a formula, when you cannot, if sort of the if the constants mean or if the letters variables mean different things in different situations, can you insert one formula into another? Sort of try to really spend time manipulating and figuring out how to get from one formula to another, because you will often have to do that, especially in paper ones in the IV, and you will also be a lot more. You know, or more flexible or more able to sort of play around with the numbers because very often you get um, very often you're supposed to find something and you have no idea how to do it because the standard formula doesn't fit with the values you have so then look for another formula that has some of the same variables so you can sort of manipulate it and put them into each other moving on from those constants I talked about make sure you learn all of them even the constants that are in your data booklet even though a lot of them are not Make sure you understand what they are, when they're applied, and so forth. When you're working on a topic, go through the IB syllabus point by point and make sure you can answer all of it. If something seems weird, draw it out. Draw the different forces acting on the body, in which direction is minus and positive. That's very often something you will get confused and your number numbers will turn out wrong. So often it's easier for you to draw it out and sort of label everything on it so you make sure you don't forget anything. So that's all for physics, moving on to chemistry. Number one is to learn from the examples in the book. So there are a lot of calculations in chemistry, a lot more than you would think, and they're often quite simple, but they're not very obvious. So make sure you look at the worked examples in your book and figure out uh, where different numbers come in, how to sort of subtract things. There are a lot of small details that are easy to miss or easy to forget. So make sure you write everything out, that you look at the examples, and that you really try to understand what's going on. Make funny rules to memorize. There's so much stuff you need to memorize in chemistry high level. I know also biology is a subject you need to memorize a lot in. So it's very practical to make sort of easy fun sort of jokes or funny memorization techniques or, you know, use all the first letters of something and make up a little rhyme or anything like that, so you will remember things. Chemistry is a great subject to make posters and flashcards, because there are a lot of things you need to remember and see very often to sort of get the hang off. So make flashcards for definitions or make drawings on them, make posters, I've talked about earlier, my room was covered in posters that I made for chemistry with like bond angles and you know orbitals shape in space everything like that put them up so you can sort of see them very often if not all the time very often and work on memorizing it or you know putting it into your long-term memory next thing is that you need to use it you need to use the chemistry so do exercises do tons of exercises I didn't do enough make sure you know all the basic stuff because chemistry it just builds on one another like the next one chapter leads to the next, to the next, to the next. And very often, it's a lot easier to understand everything as like when you've finished your syllabus. So when you 
when you know everything you're supposed to know, it's a lot easier to tie things together because some things don't really make sense unless you've done sort of a later chapter. But make sure you really understand the basics of moles and concentration and things like that. Because if you don't know the very basics, you will mess it up and mess it up and mess it up as you go and you will suffer greatly. I would say print out two uh, copies of the syllabus for chemistry. One you will have for your revision time, one you will have as you do things in class. So as you go through the chapters or as you're working with a topic, go through syllabus point by syllabus point and make sure you completely understand what it is about. Make small drawings, uh, write things, write annotations. My syllabus was covered in ink and drawings and highlighters and pens when I was done. But it helps so much. If, you, if you're if you sure you know it from the beginning, it's a lot easier. I only did it at the very end, which mean, meant a lot more revision for me. But go by syllabus point for syllabus point. Make sure you understand everything. Write everything down. Don't, don't fool yourself. Like, don't say, yeah, you know it when you don't really know it. Because you're going to pay for that later on. If there are some syllabus points you don't completely understand, I will link... Um, Richard Thornley's channel down below. He's a great guy who does IB chemistry syllabus point by syllabus point videos on YouTube explaining things. He's playing this computer game to sort of illustrate some things so it will make you remember. It's a lot of fun. He's extremely good at explaining it. Uh, so definitely check out Richard Thornley, link down below if you're doing IB chemistry. High level, standard level, anything. He's great. Same as in physics, make sure you learn your constant and also make sure to draw things out. In chemistry, you are more likely to have to actually draw things on your exam. And it's a lot more, I don't know, abstract? But some things are very specific, I don't know how to explain it. But with chemistry, there are a lot of things you should be able to draw, like, you know, draw out how, like the, how an atom looks with um, the core of the nucleus and then the different shells going out, um, the different orbitals, everything like that. Make sure you really draw it out so you have an understanding of how it looks because you will most likely be asked about that on your exam. Has anyone else noticed how the mass spectrometer really looks like a dragon? I mean, look at it. And my final tip is to teach yourself. Now this is something that can be applied for most subjects, but I especially needed it in chemistry, also some in physics. And that is to really go through things and try to teach it back to yourself. So I would either like use my whiteboard or just have a flowing conversation with myself, but I would try to explain a certain, for instance, syllabus point. Or I would try to do an exercise or solve an exercise while I explained what I was doing along the way. That way it's very easy for you to find flaws if there's anything you don't under properly understand. It's very easy for you to detect that early on. So that was the things or tips and tricks I had for studying for languages, for physics and for chemistry. I hope they helped some of you guys out. If you have any more questions or any more good ideas on how to study for the different subjects that I haven't mentioned, make sure to leave it down below. Uh, leave any requests. Make sure you like this video if it was helpful and subscribe if you want more and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!